Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Sinclair to be honoured alongside Schmidt, McLeod and BC friendlies against Australia. Rugby World Cup referee calls bunker system a mistake and wants to face media. Here's how many people that will be in your capital city by 2071. Today in sports, week ahead, November 24th to 30th. Uruguay wants to speed up trade talks with China, Mercosur, puts pressure on Paraguay. Sinclair to be honoured alongside Schmidt, McLeod and BC friendlies against Australia. CBC. Veteran goalkeeper Aaron McLeod and midfielder Sophie Schmidt, who have both retired from international football, will also be honoured alongside Christine Sinclair at the friendly between Canada and Australia in Vancouver next month. The match will be Sinclair's last international appearance before she retires. Over 35,000 tickets have already been sold for the game. Rugby World Cup referee calls bunker system a mistake and wants to face media. Telegraph. French referee Matthew Raynal has criticized World Rugby for introducing the television match official bunker system at such short notice before the Rugby World Cup. Raynal suggested that the bunker's implementation had been a mistake, as it had not been practiced or used enough. He also stated that it was difficult to communicate decisions to the audience and spectators, which was something that could be done before the bunker was implemented. Raynal believes that referees should be able to explain their decisions to the media after a match. World Rugby stated that the bunker had been introduced after discussions with match officials, coaches, and administrators, and that it had been embraced by the match official team in a professional manner. Raynal also spoke about social media abuse of referees, stating that it should not be accepted in the same way that it is not accepted in person. He criticized the impact of slow-motion footage and social media on referees' decisions, and called for stronger laws and government intervention to combat social media abuse. Here's how many people that will be in your capital city by 2071. ABC. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has released new projections for Australia's population growth, predicting that it could reach between 34.3 million and 45.9 million people by 2071. Melbourne is set to overtake Sydney as the country's most populous city, and Victoria's population is projected to reach between 9.3 million and 13.8 million by 2071. New South Wales will remain the most populous state, with a population of between 10.8 million and 13.8 million by 2071. Tasmania's population is expected to increase, but the number of deaths will exceed births for most years between now and 2071. Today in sports, week ahead, November 24-30. Associated Press. This article provides a list of significant sports events that occurred on November 24, November 25, November 26, and November 27 throughout history. Some notable events include the formation of the NHL in 1917, the Detroit Lions suffering their first defeat in franchise history in 1934, and the Chicago Bears defeating the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day in 1980. Another significant event is the Connecticut women's basketball team winning their 89th consecutive home game in 2011, setting an NCAA record. In addition, Justin Tucker of the Baltimore Ravens makes all four of his field goal attempts, including a 57-yarder, in 2016. Uruguay wants to speed up trade talks with China, Mercosur, puts pressure on Paraguay. Reuters. Uruguayan President Luis Lacage Po has expressed a desire to speed up negotiations on a free trade agreement, FTA, between Uruguay, China, and the Mercosur trade bloc. China is already a significant investor in South America and has offered tariff-free access to its consumer market to four countries. A China-Mercosur FTA could put pressure on Paraguay, the only South American country with ties to Taiwan, to reconsider its links with Taiwan, which China considers part of its territory. However, Argentina, Brazil, and Paraguay, all members of Mercosur, want to settle an FTA with Europe instead. Pension Fund opposes Brookfield-led bid for Australian company Origin Energy. The Toronto Star. Shareholders of Australian utility Origin Energy have delayed a vote on a proposed takeover offer by a consortium led by Brookfield and EIG. The delay comes after pension fund manager Australian Super, which holds a stake of more than 17% in Origin, announced that it would vote against the offer. The consortium had made a revised offer valued at $10.6 billion, excluding debt, but Australian Super has called it a low-ball offer that is substantially below Origin's long-term value. The vote has been postponed to December 4. If the offer is not approved, Brookfield has proposed an alternative plan to buy Origin's energy markets business, while EIG would acquire the other assets. Earning under $80,000? A new report says you should get free childcare. ABC. 
The Australian Productivity Commission has recommended changes to the country's childcare subsidy to increase access to early childhood education for children from all backgrounds. The commission called for families with an annual income of $80,000 or less to become eligible for a 100% subsidy, up from the current 90%. It also recommended measures to expand the workforce and establish a national early childhood education and care commission. The commission's final report is due to be released in June 2024. Israel, Hamas to start four-day truce on Friday, Gaza hospital director arrested. The Sydney Morning Herald. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a four-day ceasefire that is due to start on Friday morning. The deal, which is the first in the seven-week-old war between the two sides, will involve a comprehensive ceasefire in North and South Gaza, as well as the release of Israeli hostages and the release of Palestinians from Israeli jails. Israel has received an initial list of hostages to be released from Gaza, which is planned to take place once the ceasefire has taken hold. However, both sides have said that they will return to fighting once the truce is over. Plague of rats hits Australia invading homes, cars and boats. Telegraph. Northern Australia is facing a plague of rats, with the rodents causing damage to cars, boats and local wildlife. The native long-haired rats have thrived due to plentiful rainfall and an abundance of crops. They have invaded homes, eaten crops and contaminated water sources, and even attacked ducks. Some of the rats have drowned in rivers and estuaries while searching for food, with their bloated bodies washing up on beaches. Authorities are attempting to remove the corpses, which attract flies. The fishing town of Karumba has been particularly badly affected, with rats climbing up anchor chains and onto boats. Thousands of Sri Lankan workers set to depart for Israel despite war. Reuters. Sri Lanka plans to send 20,000 workers to Israel to work in the farm and construction sectors, in an attempt to boost the country's economy. The move comes after many Thai workers fled Israel following the recent conflict with Hamas, and the Palestinian workforce was largely banned from working. The Sri Lankan workers will join the 9,000 already in Israel, working in farming and care for the elderly. Sri Lanka's economy contracted by 7.8% last year, pushing 2.5 million people into poverty. Russia has sold nearly all its oil well above the West's price cap government official. Reuters. Russia has managed to sell almost all of its oil well above the Western imposed price cap of $60 per barrel, according to a Russian government official. The European Union, G7 countries and Australia introduced the cap in an attempt to limit Russia's ability to fund the conflict in Ukraine. Despite the cap, over 99% of oil traded above the $60 per barrel ceiling, with Russia managing to place most of its exports with domestic or non-Western foreign shippers. India wins toss and fields in first T20 match against Australia just four days after World Cup final. Associated Press. India has won the toss and elected to field in the first 2020 international match against Australia. The match comes just four days after the two teams met in the Cricket World Cup final. India will be led by Surya Kumar Yadav, while Australia is captained by Matthew Wade. Both teams have made changes to their squads, with several members of Australia's World Cup winning team returning home. The Indian squad includes players who impressed in the Indian Premier League. Australia has included experienced players such as Stephen Smith and Marcus Stoinis. And that's a wrap for today's news. We had quite a mix of stories, from retirement honours for Canadian soccer legend Christine Sinclair to a plague of rats in Australia. But let's start with the big news in the world of sports. First off, we have the retirement of two beloved Canadian soccer players, Aaron McLeod and Sophie Schmidt. They will be honoured alongside Christine Sinclair in her final international appearance before retirement. It's sure to be an emotional match, and with over 35,000 tickets already sold, it's clear that fans are eager to show their support. Moving on to the world of rugby, referee Matthew Raynal has criticised the introduction of the television match official bunker system at the Rugby World Cup. He believes it was a mistake and that it hasn't been used or practiced enough. Raynal also called for stronger laws and government intervention to combat social media abuse of referees. It's a tough job, and it's important that referees have the support they need. Now, let's talk about some future projections. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has released new population growth projections, with Melbourne set to overtake Sydney as the country's most populous city by 2071. It's interesting to see how cities change and evolve over time. And speaking of change, Uruguay is looking to speed up trade talks with China and the Mercosur trade bloc. This could have implications for Paraguay, which currently has ties to Taiwan. It's a challenging situation, but negotiations are always a part of the game. In other news, shareholders of Australian utility Origin Energy have delayed a vote on a proposed takeover offer, 
and the Australian Productivity Commission has recommended changes to the country's childcare subsidy. It's all about finding the right balance and ensuring access for all. Moving on to international affairs, Israel and Hamas have agreed to a four-day ceasefire, which is a welcome development in the ongoing conflict. And in Russia, despite Western-imposed price caps on oil, the country has managed to sell almost all of its oil well above the cap. It just goes to show that when there's a will, there's a way. Lastly, we have some interesting stories from Sri Lanka and India. Sri Lanka plans to send 20,000 workers to Israel to boost its economy, while India and Australia face off in a T20 match just four days after the Cricket World Cup final. It's a quick turnaround, but both teams are ready to give it their all. And that's a wrap for today's news. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. What do you think about Christine Sinclair's retirement and the honors she's receiving? Are you surprised by the rat plague in Australia? And what are your predictions for the India vs Australia T20 match? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.